Hey everybody, welcome back to American History Class with Mr. Finn. Today, we are continuing the American Revolution. We're going to get very close to the end of the Revolution today, and I'm going to want you to have these notes down that we're going to be taking, and that's what you're going to be turning in today. Uh, so, if you remember from last class, we were talking about Valley Forge, we were talking about the Winter Camp. Uh, let me get out of the way, you can pause that. Um, the Winter Camp, uh, we had Baron von Steuben, who had trained the troops, General Washington, keeping the uh, military together. Uh, and we talked briefly about one country that's going to be a big help uh, in finishing the war for us. So let's get to, well, let me, let me give that to you now. Okay. So the American Revolution, uh, Cornwallis and Yorktown you have down. We are going to have a country. Let's put it here. Um, we're going to look at France today um, as well. So France and the American Revolution and France. Um, so why is France important? Well, let me tell you. Let's start with France and get to the rest of the stuff. So France is and has been uh, an enemy, a thorn in the side of England for, for years and years and years before this, even before our American Revolution of 1775 to 1783. The French and the English are constantly battling one another for hundreds of years. So it made a lot of sense for the colonists to reach out to France. Because remember, in the colonies, we didn't have an army, we didn't have a military, we had no real government. We were just colonies at that time. So we're putting together all these things, like our army with George Washington. We start to have diplomats who are people that go and talk to other countries. And we send some people to France, some famous people, Thomas Jefferson for one, Benjamin Franklin. Um, so there's, there's, some, there's some founding fathers that you probably have heard of that are going to France and trying to convince the French, hey, listen, help us out. You know, we can use money, we can use some ships and all that stuff because we're trying to fight your enemy, uh, the English. And wouldn't you just love to, you know, give England a nice shot there? Like, hey, we're going to we'll get it. We'll help, uh, we'll help the American colonists against England. That'll really bother them. It'll be hilarious. And so uh, over time, it takes a while to convince France because remember, Fr you don't remember, but France also has a monarchy. So they have a king of their own at this time. Um, and so what we're saying is, hey, king, help us fight that king off. Uh, and a lot of times monarchs or kings and queens and things like that stick together. And they're like, hey, I don't want you overthrowing a king because I don't want my people thinking they can overthrow me a king. Um, so it takes some convincing, but finally France agrees and they send uh, uh, military, military aid, they send ships, they send men. Um, and that helps us out. It really does. It's a big help, and I'm going to explain why in a second. So, getting France on our side is a big deal because, again, we had no navy. I mean, we had no ships. We were, <laughs> we were, just, we were just an army that was barely being held together. Uh, and this is dragging on. 1775 to 1783. We've gone through it pretty quick, but think about that. This is years that we're talking about the American Revolution going on. So there's a couple of things going on here. One, people in England are actually getting tired of this. They're saying, yo, why is this war still going on? It should be over by now. It's costing us money. We're not very happy about fighting the colonists. Uh, but the king is not going to let it go, and England, English Parliament is going to continue to fight. But it's an unpopular war for the everyday people in England uh, because it is taking forever. And so we're getting to a point today where we're looking at around the, the, you know, the tail end of this where we'll start in like 1780, getting towards the end. Things take time too because information has to go across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, they take ships. Uh, it, it's not like today where you can just pick up a phone and call someone or shoot someone an email or a text. Uh, so things do take time. But France has now joined the side of the colonists. That's good. Um, and England is fighting in the south uh, primarily. So what they've done is they said, all right, well, we have New York. We're occupying New York. Uh, we have most of the north. The, the patriots in the north are kind of out in the woods places, and they'll come in and, and have a battle with us and then run away. But we're not in any real threat in the north. So let's turn our attention to the south because there's another thing about the south in the American colonies. A lot of the Southerners were loyalists. They made a lot of money uh, from their dealings with, uh, with England. So let's say for notes purposes, um, the South had 
loyalists. And so England's thinking, hey, if we can turn some of these colonies in the south and maybe get, you know, defeat them and get them on our side and everything, it'll be easier. And then we can kind of split the colonies and half of them will be like, no, we're good. We don't want to fight anymore. Uh, and in the north, all the patriots will be like, no, no, no. So what the English are trying to do is convince a lot of the southerners, like, hey, there's, we can end this right now. It's over. Um, however, it's not going to happen. Uh, so what does happen? Let's take a look here. Cornwallis is leading the English military. Uh, and around 1780, he's going to start to take uh, cities like Charleston and other cities in the south, which that's not the important thing. But what is important is to understand that he is having some victories in the south, and he's in control. So Cornwallis uh, is the English, again, for our notes, our English general. Our English general, Cornwallis, um, he's fought in many battles. He's, he's a you know, very successful general. Um, however, uh, he's being harassed in the South. There's uh, you know, patriot forces keep chasing him and you know, having battles and getting out of there and coming in again and getting out of there. And he's just like, hey, we got to make a move. Let's make our way back north. And so as he's making his way back north, so let's write this for our notes. Um, he wants to go north. So he's in the south, and he's starting to make his way back up to New York. Because again, the English had control of New York, and he's like, hey, you know, we've done some good stuff in the south. Now let's make our way back to New York and figure out a new strategy. And so General Cornwallis is going north, but he just keeps getting chased by these small patriot you know, armies. And it, he's like, you know what? Why would we walk? Why would we march all the way to New York from the south? Let's stop. In Yorktown, Yorktown is going to be a city, city on the coast. It's a city on the coast. And he says, well, why don't we just stop in Yorktown? We'll have our ships come and get us, and then we don't need to march north and keep getting chased by these patriots. Uh, it'll just be way easier and better to do that. So he gets to Yorktown, uh, and at this exact moment, what's going to happen is... Uh, George, our boy, George Washington. George Washington knows something. George Washington is going to immediately leave his position in the north, and George Washington will go to Yorktown. Now, why would he do this? Well, here is why he does it. Back to our friends France, the French. The French have a navy. Again, a navy are ships. Um, and what happens when Cornwallis gets to Yorktown? He gets there and he's like, wait, where are all our ships? Where's all the British ships? Where's the English ships? All I see out there on the water are French ships. And so he cannot get on any ships to go to New York. But at the same time, what did I just say? George Washington had immediately left the North and gone to Yorktown. And so what happens to Cornwallis at this point is he gets surrounded. He gets surrounded on both sides. He can't get on ships. The uh, French uh, Navy's there. He turns around and he's like, wait, George Washington and the whole army's there. I'm stuck. I'm stuck in Yorktown. What do I do? And I'm the English general. I'm the person in charge of this. And I am stuck here. It is a random kind of end to this war because what happens is he's just going north to regroup and all of a sudden he gets unluckily cornered in on both sides and so Cornwallis ends up getting surrounded at Yorktown. George Washington's there, the French Navy is there, and he has to surrender. So Cornwallis is going to surrender. Uh, this is going to actually happen. Let's have, I know it's a lot of notes so I want to make it big so you can see. Um, Surrender in 1781. So he's going to surrender in 1781, um, and he has his he has his uh, second in command go out. He doesn't do it himself because he's like, I can't believe it. And so they come out and they surrender. Um, George Washington has won the war. Everyone's ecstatic. The word is starting to spread that the English had been cornered and they had had to surrender. But as you can see in 1781. 
We don't find an end to this war until 1783. That's what we'll talk about next time. But again, it's because you know news takes time. Nothing happens immediately. But today, I want these notes turned in. But the important thing to understand is Cornwallis, in the end of this American Revolution, is kind of a a strange end. It was, you know, it it just kind of happened out of nowhere. All of a sudden, people are like, "Wait, we won? It's over? What?" How'd that happen? We thought, we didn't think it was gonna end so abruptly or out of nowhere. Um, so turn these notes into me today. Again, today, I want this for participation and attendance purposes. Um, and then next time we're gonna talk about what actually the paperwork that ends the war. But now the question is gonna be, if you were the colonist, it's like, yes, we won the war. We are free from England. Um, now what? <laughs> you have to now create invent a new country with all of these different uh, co former colonies uh, that we're going to start to call them states but you have to start from scratch it's like wow we won great but now we have a lot of work to do and we'll get into uh, what happens from there so if you want to you can pause it now so you can get this all down if you don't have it but again make sure you turn this in today and i'll see you next class